Hello everyone, welcome to Sermon Prep. It's great to be with you again as we look forward to the sixth Sunday of Easter. How quickly this Easter tide is passing by now. Next Sunday we will be at the Ascension and then the Sunday following that, Pentecost, which brings to a close Easter tide. And so we've only got two weeks of Easter left. So let's make sure we are full of joy for these last two weeks, that we really live in Easter glory and Easter joy and Easter peace, all those wonderful gifts that God gives us through the resurrection of Jesus, his son. So what are our readings for this sixth Sunday? Of course, we carry on reading from the Acts of the Apostles. This wonderful story about the early church, the early church that has come together because of the resurrection, the early church that is full of this joy and peace of the risen Christ. So Acts chapter 15 verses 1 to 2 and then verses 22 to 29. Our responsorial psalm is Psalm 67 and the little verses let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Isn't that what we want in the church? That everyone in the church praises God, but also that the church is the place where everybody outside the church can come and praise God. The second reading is taken from the last chapter of the book of Revelation, chapter 21 verses 10 to 14, and then verses 22 and 23. The Gospel is taken from John's Gospel again, chapter 14, verses 23 to 29. This is the farewell discourse, well, a part of the farewell discourse of Jesus. His disciples know that the end is coming, that Jesus will soon no longer be with them. And they are dejected. They are feeling a little anxious and sad about this. So Jesus speaks to them and comforts them. And he comforts them by telling them that the Spirit will be with them. And in fact, they will have a, an incredible experience of his never-ending presence. He also speaks about the gift of peace that he will give them. We know that the traditional Jewish greeting would be shalom, peace. And so Jesus expands this peace, this shalom, and speaks about his peace, the peace that he gives, the peace that only he can give. And so he is trying to comfort the disciples with his presence by giving them a special peace, a peace that comes directly from him and only he can give. And so if they experience this peace of Jesus, they experience his presence. It's a sign that he is present to them. In our world at this time, wouldn't it be great if we had Jesus' peace we think of Ukraine and Russia. We think of areas in our own continent that are racked by war. We think of parts of South America with drug lords and um, all those sorts of divisions. We look at North America and we see those horrific mass murders there. Uh, people gunned down in shopping centers white supremacists wanting to force their ideas, racial hatred and tensions there and in our own country too still. And so wouldn't it be great if we could be agents of this peace? Jesus is present with us and he asks us to share his peace with others. So let's, as we look forward to this Sunday, let's pray for the gift of peace. Let us ask that this incredible peace of God fill our hearts and those around us. 
So, the first reading, the Acts of the Apostles, we're barely 50 years after the ascension in this little extract, and all sorts of divisions have crept into the church. The church is being pulled apart by all these debates surrounding circumcision or baptism, um, those pro-Jewish groups favoring circumcision, and those Gentile groups against it. And so, because of these divisions, the apostles meet in the first council of the church, and they meet and decide what is fundamental and essential. And they make it very clear that it is baptism. Because Jesus comes to give us new life. In and with Jesus, all the old things pass away. And Jesus fulfills all the Jewish laws. And so, circumcision is not necessary. It is baptism, the grace of baptism, that makes us children of God. It is that that brings us into the body of Christ. It is baptism that takes away all our sins. It is baptism that opens the door to new life. And the first council of the church in Jerusalem made that really very clear. We don't have to observe human regulations. We have to follow the Spirit. We have to follow what Jesus gives us. And so perhaps as we reflect on that first reading, we can reflect on our commitment to our baptismal promises. And it's that that makes us children of God. There's nothing we can do that makes God love us more. There's nothing we have to uh, tick off to make sure that, you know, we've done this, that, and the next thing. It's baptism. Very important, that. The second reading is taken, as I said, from the book of Revelation. And we're ending up now with the book of Revelation. We're finishing it off. And it speaks of the new Jerusalem, hey? the new earth. And it, it, it's beyond beautiful. It is just so magnificent. Um, a sign that in and with Jesus, everything is renewed. Everything is made wonderful. And that's what we look for. That's what we are striving to achieve here on earth. Yes, we won't achieve it fully, but we're preparing for this incredibly wonderful new creation. Um, some wonderful symbolism contained in this reading. Um, first of all, the walls are really high, huh? Hey? Um, a sign of the solidity and uh, the impregnability of the new. Nothing bad will come in. Everybody inside will be safe. They have nothing to fear. Obviously, the, the gates, the 12 gates, three on each side, open up so that everybody from everywhere can come in. It's not just one or two little gates for the special people. No. Twelve gates that face around the whole of the world. Everybody can come in. Everyone is welcome. Of course, too, the twelve foundation stones, hey, with the names of the twelve tribes. We, we, we have a sense of that, the twelve tribes of Israel. Uh, the Old Testament, and we know of the Twelve Apostles. So there is a link between the Old Testament, the old people of God, and the new people of God. Um, that, that's, I think we're, we're familiar with that, that we're in continuity with the Old Testament. The people of God of the Old Testament with and in Jesus Christ have become the new Israel. Also, no temple. There is no need for this earthly worship anymore because Jesus has been sacrificed. He is 
the lamb of sacrifice and the priest and the altar. We hear those uh, images throughout Easter, especially in our preface. The preface, the fifth preface of Easter talks about that very clearly. I've been using it this week, so maybe you have heard and noticed. Um, and so Jesus is the sacrifice. There's no need for an altar or a temple. Jesus, and he is the light of the world. Huh? So there's no need for any light because there's no darkness in Jesus. And so if he is present, if he is present in the new creation fully, and we can all fully see him, there is no darkness. There is no need for lamps or lights. Um, no need for ESCOM. <laughs> so a wonderful gift of light in and with Jesus. So what strikes me from these readings today, for well, for the sixth Sunday, is the 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 home that we find in the church and in Jesus. And the future is that we will all be at home. We will all be welcome. It'll be a wonderful home of peace and joy. It's too beautiful even to describe. That's, that's the future. That's what we look for, it forward to. But you know, it's not something just in the future. We are meant to be building that and creating that in the church. With God's spirit, with God's peace, we should be all be building the kingdom of God already. The church is the kingdom of God already. God already present with us in a special way. And in our parish, are we doing that? Are we creating this beautiful place where all are welcome and all meet and encounter the risen Lord who is their light, their peace and their joy? I hope that's what we're doing. I hope we can all see that. I hope we're all participating in that. Some thoughts for the sixth Sunday of Easter. I look forward to seeing you. I look forward to welcoming you into this beautiful church that we have to celebrate and to praise and to thank God. We're all different. We all got different ideas, but we all know that God loves us. So I hope to see you. If you can't manage to get with us in person, we'll be live streaming the 7 a.m. Mass this Sunday. Till then, God bless everyone. Bye-bye.